Hello Floss Tube, it's Stephanie, Ms. So Crafty. Welcome to my Floss Tube video number 76. <laughs> Welcome back to all my subscribers. If you're new, hello, consider clicking that red button <laughs> and ringing the bell if you want to be notified. So today is May 9th, Saturday. I have something a little bit different today. It's a Stitch Mania Week 1 vlog. Well, week one plus a day, eight days. So over those eight days, I did three new starts and I worked on five whips, one of which is now a finish. So I'm pretty excited about that. And today is kind of a low key day. It's freezing outside, like literally frost warning tonight, which is strange for my part of the world this time of year. But uh, I made French toast for breakfast and I made Wonderful chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> They're so good. I found the recipe via YouTube, so let me know if you want it. All right, or maybe I'll just put it in the description box because you know everybody should have these cookies. They're crispy on the outside and soft and chewy on the inside and just really good. And they're simple, one bowl. Everything a cookie should be. All right, enough about cookies. <laughs> now for the stitching. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Mania, everybody. Ta-ta. Hello friends, it is Friday night, well, actually, early Saturday morning, yeah, I stayed up pretty late, I couldn't help it, I was just so excited to start this, and I didn't really get started stitching until pretty late tonight, like around 9.30, 10 o'clock, <laughs> so it's been a few hours, and I got over 600 stitches, I am thrilled with that, it means that I am well on my way to the thousand that I need for semi-sane, for my first task on my virtual stitchy trip to Japan. <laughs> so this fabric looks terribly desaturated. It's actually a really pretty blue on the darker side. Anyway, so I did start with the wheat like I said I would and then I very quickly moved on to the green dress and I am pleased to report that the bottom part of the dress i.e. all the dress on this page is basically done except for this color the 934 it's worked up through there there's a little bit more that goes up there like that and up there like that and then this green business up here is her sleeves so yeah i'm thrilled with that progress i think it's really great what i'm going to do tomorrow is well, finish off the 934 and then I'm going to pull some purple colors and work on her cape, which is voluminous. Right? It's like the rest of the page basically is her cape. And down here is a black cat sitting on a big fat orange pumpkin. So that will be fun to stitch, I think. I don't think I'll get to the cat. I'll just probably uh, work on the cape. That's plenty of stitches. It'll keep me busy for the next few days. As I work on that this piece this month and starting tomorrow, there will be a whip. <laughs> well, I mean, what my plan for Mania is each new start will get one day dedicated solely to it. And then in as far as I spend more than one day on each new start, it will share time with existing whips. So tomorrow will be whip number one, and we will talk more about that tomorrow. All right, good night. Have a good sleep or, well, that's silly. You're, you're not going to sleep. You're watching this video. I'll have a good sleep, and I'll see you in the morning. Ta-ta. Hello, friends. It is May 2nd, and I wanted to pop in and give you an update on Harvest Witch. So I snuck in a few hours this afternoon and I got over 400 stitches, which means I am over a thousand and I am so happy with that. So what I did is I did the rest of that, the 936, like I said I would, up here and here, and then I worked on the shafts of wheat because I had pulled those threads, so I figured I might as well, and then I parked the threads over here where they continue on to the next page. And then I started with the purples. So I have worked with several of the purple colors in her cape. And 
it's kind of patchy because there's a lot of fill-in to do with blended floss and with metallics and stuff. And I'm just not going to mess with that right now, I don't think, during Mania. But uh, I think it's going to look awesome in the end. I have a bunch of floss up here parked at the page break, which is great. I love having parked floss to work with when I move on to the next page. It is worth noting that the top pages of the pattern are not full. They are quite small, actually. This pattern is not really that big. It's like 10 and a quarter inches by 11 and a quarter inches on 28 count or 14 count, and it is by no means full coverage. There's a lot of empty space between, for example, the witch and the moon. So, yeah, I am really pretty psyched about this project. I think it's going to work out really awesome and not take forever. <laughs> so, both good things. Hello, ladies and gents. It is May 2nd still. After dinner now, after dinner, after cleanup. So, <laughs> I made a really good dinner. For those of you in the DC Metro or Spring Valley Farm, they're doing this awesome uh, CSA type thing. It's You don't have to subscribe, it's week by week. You just buy a box as you want it and it's like, I think it was like $35 or something and I got the most awesome selection of produce. We've been really enjoying it. Tonight I used all the asparagus. I used a bunch of the spinach, some of the cherry tomatoes, some of the heirloom tomato, the and I made like a spinach pesto pasta with shrimp and oh, it was so good. It was like pasta primavera spring thing. Wonderfully delicious. Husband really enjoyed it too. Uh, our little one, six year old turned up his nose. He wouldn't try it, so. Oh well, can't win them all, right? <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, I thought pesto was like the grossest thing ever, but I really love it now. Anyway, so this is a Twilight Bridge and I am going to work on this column here. Hey peeps, so it's Saturday evening, well, early Sunday morning actually, to be accurate. <laughs> I have been working on this for some hours and I did about 360 stitches, mostly full cross. I just worked with all the park threads and I worked on this roof line here, a little bit on the chimney, some of the light in the window, uh, some of the window frames, and I did a little bit of the half cross, the background for the tree, and a little bit of the sky up there as well. I did not work with these park threads. I need to do the rest of the full cross in this area, all the little flowers and whatnot before I do that do the greens, which are the background leaves. It's just, it's too difficult to do the full cross when I already have all the half cross in because the half cross is so thick, being with like five strands, so. All right, that's it for tonight. I did not get quite as much progress as I would have preferred. I was really hoping I could get like 500, but at least I finished my homework for Enchanted Stitching for the week, I think, so. I will uh, see you tomorrow on the flip side. Bye for now. Hello, hello. Stephanie here, Mizzo So Crafty. Today is May 3rd, well, for another 30 minutes or so. <laughs> it's been a long, strange day. I got up really early this morning, went to the grocery store at like 6.45 a.m. The shopping was very good. The store was pretty well stocked. I even found toilet paper for the first time since early March, and... It was 20 bucks, but now I don't have to worry about toilet paper for another few months, so that's good. <laughs> anyway, so I'm at the, uh, the checkout, you know, with my groceries, and I notice a few of the items are wet, and I'm like, oh, condensation. But then I quickly realized it wasn't condensation, it was bleach. I had gotten a, you know, half a gallon thing of bleach, and it was leaking all over my groceries. So I was like, excuse me ma'am like to the clerk who was checking out the guy in front of me like do you have paper towels <laughs> i cleaned up as best i could my hand was my hands were covered in bleach though so that was like a problem <laughs> i had wipes in my purse but 
little wipes don't really do much against, you know, hands doused with bleach. Yeah, bleach is not a good thing. Obviously, we shouldn't be inhaling it or drinking it or even putting it on our bodies. <laughs> I washed my hands like, I don't know, four or five times and still it took like a good 12, 14 hours for the bleach stink to dissipate. So, yeah, that's my little PSA. Don't touch bleach with your uh, bare fingers. <laughs> Harvest Witch. So I have worked on this some today. I did like 400 and some stitches. I've been doing the purple, mostly this darker color, the 333. That's really fun. I love that color. It looks a little bit darker than it is in real life. Well, if you're familiar with DMC, you know that 333 is a pretty, you know, medium type purple. It's not super dark. And I know before I said that I wasn't going to get to the cat, but this little bit here with the fractional stitches, that's where the cat's head is going to be. So I might actually do the cat tomorrow. As for right now, I'm going to work on the save the stitches because that was my secondary whip for today. And since I'm getting such a late start with it, I don't think I'm really going to finish the part 17, but we'll see. I'll be right back and I'll show you where I am with that. Okay, I'm back, and here we are with Save the Stitches. This is part 17, which ideally I would like to finish this month. I don't know. I'm just not getting too much time on my whips as I work on them concurrently with Harvest Witch. That may be because well, Harvest Witch is, I mean, she's not huge, but she's a big project, and I really love her. I could happily, you know monogamize my time for Harvest Witch. So it's kind of difficult to like stop working on that and bring out my whips to work on on the same day, but I'm either going to have to bring these out at some point later in the May, which will interfere with my plan to do a mostly monogamous back half of May on Rapunzel, or I will just have to let go of my progress-related goals on certain whips, such as finishing part 17 of Save the Sitches. <laughs> so, we shall see. I will pop in in, like, an hour and show you how far I get. Ta-da! Okay, it's been an hour and 15 minutes, approximately. This took longer than it should have, because I spent, like, 20 minutes. I did, like, this part of the uh that third of it with the stitches in the wrong spot I had, they were over one stitch too far to the left so I had to frog it and start over <laughs> I think I'm just going to continue on and start part uh well the last part of part 17 because it's pretty late but I'm not tired because I had a, a late nap so I will check in a bit later and show you how far I get. And plus I have a bunch of thread still left on my needle, so I may as well use it. <laughs> All right, ta-ta for now. Hello, lovely friends. It is May the 4th. Star Wars Day. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying that if it's your thing. It's not really my cup of tea, but no matter. It's been a good day. I made these fantastic waffles this morning with my sourdough starter and this is my stitchy vlog so I don't want to get real into the uh <laughs> the baking talk but I'm just gonna say my sourdough starter it's the gift that keeps on giving I only created it I started my starter because I couldn't get yeast and I love to bake but since then I have created so many awesome things with my starter not just bread and not just sourdough either I mean you can use your starter for pretty much anything. It's not necessarily going to make it taste like sourdough unless you give it that time to ferment and the simplicity of the ingredients in a sourdough loaf, which are only water, flour, and salt. And the starter, of course, which is just water and flour. Anyway, so save the stitches. I did work on this part after I made my clip last night. This block is kind of weird because it has all this metallic cross stitches 
throughout it. So not the part that I did, but the rest of it does. So I think I'm probably going to have to work it with two needles and do the cross stitches as I go. And back stitch a little, then do another cross stitch and so forth. Also, I will need to extend the border down because I am doing the border as I go along. Oops, it is still May 4th, about 9.30 p.m. I'm getting kind of an early start on my whip for the day, Father Frost and Polar Bear, because I looked at my plans and realized I want to get 200 stitches on this tonight for my magical stitches homework. That's two tasks. There's a ton of tasks this week, 10 separate tasks. <laughs> And it's 50 per task if it's a new start or 100 if it's an existing whip. And I'm not doing enough new starts to get like all 10 at 50. So I'm going to fit in as many as I can. But for the most part, it's going to be those 100 stitch uh, chunks. So 200 stitches on this. And I pulled the green colors to do the greenery below his neck. Like it'll, He's wearing like a wreath or something. And maybe that'll get me 200 stitches. We'll see. I will check in later and show you how far I get. And also show you what I did on Harvest Witch today. Gosh, it's going to be so hard to put that project away. I really love her. All right. I will uh, see you in a bit. Ta-ta. Good morning, shall I say. So here is my update on Father Frost and Polar Bear. I know I said earlier that I needed 200 stitches. Well... I decided I actually needed 500 because I started working on the Enchanted Stitchers Mania Challenge, which it's kind of complicated, but yeah, I needed like 500 stitches for a certain task, so I did it. <laughs> I worked on, well, I started with the greens. I did all the greens. The area that's still undone will eventually be beaded. Oops. <laughs> Then I worked on another color on the polar bear, this darker gray color, 317. So there's some stitches up there for his ear and the other ear and the mouth, the nose. I did a little bit of white to fill in the very bottom of his neck. And then I came over here and started doing all the, a bunch of white on Santa's beard. So that all together, it was like 539 stitches, which was good, except I feel like, you know, it was a lot of stitches, but hardly any finger, you know, space on the project. I guess it was a good bit. I don't know. It just, this project is taking a while for an ornament. <laughs> it's going to look really, really incredible when it's done, though, I think. It's going to be just beautiful between the opalescent fabric and the the chronic in it and the beading and all the backstitching detail and everything and it's just such a sweet scene with Father Frost nose to nose with his polar bear friend so all right I'll be back in a minute and I'll show you Harvest Witch. Harvest Witch so today I worked on her a pretty short amount of time this afternoon and I got 284 stitches not terrible but the least amount of progress that I got on her out of these four days and that's kind of a bummer <laughs> but you know it is what it is I did a big chunk on Father Frost so well such wise anyway so what I did today was I just keep working left on the uh, cape so I finished I got to the edge of the darker purples and up here and I got down to the actual bottom of the chart over here, so that's good. You can definitely see the outline of the cat's head now. And this part that's carved out is going to be a pumpkin leaf. So, yeah, I really love this piece. I can't believe it took me so long to start it. I don't know what I was waiting for. <laughs> Room in my rotation, I guess. And... I don't really have room in my rotation now, but I'm hoping that having these 15 projects will sort of light a fire under me to want to finish stuff, because in April my stitchy bug was lagging a bit. I mean, I stitched most days, you know, 28 out of 30 days, but some of those days I didn't really stitch very much, only like an hour or so, and 
I just spent too much time reading the news and stressing out, basically, so... (laughs) I'm definitely going to try to stitch more in May, and with Mania, I think I'm getting off to a pretty good start. And tomorrow, a new start, so I will uh, see you then on the flip side. Good night, good morning, bye-bye. So I am getting ready to make a new start. It is May the 5th. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everyone. We celebrated with a party pack from our favorite local taco restaurant, Bar Taco in Falls Church, Virginia, and to the Mosaic Center. It was so good. We had pork belly tacos and chicken tacos and salsa verde, pickled onions and cucumber slaw and all sorts of stuff. It was really good. I'm starting Fresh Squeeze Lemonade or whatever it's called by Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts on this fabric which is 32 count linen in scupper dog by weeks dye works i got it from my lns in stitches in alexandria virginia just a little fat eighth which is the smallest little cell and i have the center marked with a marking pin and i've got a bohin size 28 parked in the fabric that i'm going to be using not too long ago, I got a bumper pack of those Bohin 28s, which are my favorites, from Sassy to Stitch on eBay. I've used her before for needles and very good source. So if you need a bunch of Bowens, <laughs> look for her. <laughs> Sassy to Stitch on eBay. All right, so I'm going to start in the middle with the lemonade, like the, the O, I think is in the middle, yeah. And... My goal is to do 500 stitches with the various yellow colors, of which there are three. So I have three yellows here, plus the pink. I think the pink is for the the sweet. Let's see. The heart symbol, 3706 Mountain. Uh, No, that's 3705. Hmm. I pulled the wrong DMC when I was getting my mania stuff together. Oh, well. Pretty late, and I just wanted to show you my start one. Lemonade by Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. I am really loving this. I think the colors look fantastic on the Skebernog linen. I was at the LNS and I just wanted some green fabric to stitch this on, and this is pretty much all they had in, you know, linen, 32 linen or whatever. And I was not like over the moon excited about it, but I think now that I'm working on it, I think it works really excellent. I actually like the fact that it's kind of a dull color because the colors in the piece are very vibrant, so there's a really great contrast there. It's like a nice dichotomy, and uh, I'm very excited about this. I want to finish it like the designer showed in her Instagram feed with the fake lemons in the jar. I think that would be really fun. So I had allotted three days for this in Mania, and I think that I could finish this in three days, no problem, but I don't really want to because I had planned to use it in August for the Year of the Forgotten Sal with Soulful Stitchers that the theme is pucker up, stitch something with lemons or lemon, you know, and this is obviously lemonade. So hopefully I can get another 400 on it and without actually finishing it. I have to do, there's more to do in the border up here, fill in the petals, do the centers of the flowers, and then finish the fresh word, a couple little Another like little decorative motif over here next to sweet. Some isolated stitches in the light green. And the word and, and then delicious, and then the bottom border. The bottom border is quite a few stitches. It's like solid, as you can see. So I'll probably be able to get the 400, no problem. And what I'm doing with the, the chunks of 500 is the mania challenges with the Enchanted Stitching Group. The last challenge relates to Epcot Flower and Garden Festival, and this piece is kind of perfect for that. So the first one was stitch one colors that make you happy. So I said these bright summer yellows, that was 500, and then 
The next task is to stitch on something with flowers, so flowers on the border. <laughs> the third task is to stitch on something that you would grow in the garden, so flowers again. But as of yet, I only have like uh, 150 or 140 stitches roughly out of what, you know, the 500 that I need for that third task. So I think what I'll do is see if I can finish off the that set of stitches tomorrow and then rotate early. Maybe not. I probably won't move up my new star, but maybe I'll give some more time to Twilight Bridge because I really do want to get more progress on that piece. I don't know if I'm going to get the thousand that I had kind of planned for the stitchy trip to Japan with Emmy Sane, but I'm, there's no way I'm going to complete the stitchy trip to Japan challenge because one of the tasks is to stitch something with anime. And I don't have anything with anime. I'm not really a big fan of anime, so I don't have any desire to stitch something with anime. That That's not happening. So maybe I should just punt on that one. But I do want to get 500 because I need it for the uh, Enchanted Stitching Stitchy Challenge. For some, some challenge, I forget which one. I'll tell you about it when I do it, I guess. <laughs> the challenges are really fun. They're all kind of like related to Disney, Disney things. And the first one is related to various songs that the admins and mod, mods from the uh, group chose. And that's really fun, looking at the uh, song lyrics and thinking about the uh, how those scenes from the movies and how I can relate my pieces to those. So I'm really enjoying that, and I'm thinking I might actually try to complete that challenge, although that's very ambitious because it's a ton of different things, and most of the prompts are 500, a few of them are 1,000, so we'll see, but I think it would be really fun if I can make it work. All right, I will see you guys in the morning. Good night. Okay, okay, it is May the... Six. How's everyone doing? Almost a week down in Mania, and I am pretty much finished with my second new start. So again, this is Lemonade by Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. It is a freebie available on her Instagram feed. I'm stitch uh, stitching it on 32 count Scuppernog Linen by Weeks Dye Works. A lot of times, Weeks Linen gets kind of a bad rap on social media, and I must say, I don't agree with that. I mean, Weeks, dye, Weeks Linen is not my favorite, just because I think the colors are a little bit understated, shall we say. But it's a perfectly serviceable fabric, in my opinion. It's reasonably soft. It's has a nice heft to it. It's not like too flimsy or see-through or anything. It's nice to stitch on. Yeah, I, I don't know why people don't like it really. I think it it works great and the more natural colors to it or understated colors or whatever, it might be perfect for you if you're into stitching more like, you know, primitive type stuff. So give it a try, you know, see if you like it. Just don't uh, take uh, people's negative opinion as gospel because I think it's a fine fabric. Anyway, so I did another 400 and some stitches, so I finished the task for the mayhem and enchanted stitching to do the 500 for the things that grow in a garden. So all in all, I got like over 1,500 stitches on this, and it's almost done. What's left to finish at this point is the bottom border with the white to make sort of like a barber pole effect and this word here which will be delicious and the back stitching on the lemon but I'm gonna wait and do that in August and get a nice little finish at the last month of summer all right it is time for me to go cook dinner now well, I say cook but all I'm really gonna do is reheat the taco meal that we got from bar taco it was like four servings so just me and my husband we just ate half of it last night we got a pizza from oath pizza for my kid he loves that he was over the moon it's after dinner 
and drinks. I made these fantastic strawberry margaritas. Oh my gosh, they were so good. <laughs> my husband really liked them too. He, uh, he went straight to his head. <laughs> me, I don't know. It didn't affect me that much, but uh, I definitely enjoyed them. Anyway, so Joan Elliott, Fairy of the Rainbow. I'm showing it to you like just on the ottoman here because once I get it on the frame, you won't be able to see the whole thing. And the shadows are a little funky, but whatever, you can deal. <laughs> so I'm going to work on the wing, I guess. So I started the wing up here with this pink and I'm gonna continue doing the pink and whatever other colors I find in that area. All right, I will check in in a couple hours and show you how far I get. Bye. Hello peeps, it's me again, popping in for an update on Fairy of the Rainbow by Joan Elliott. So I've been working on her for a few hours this evening and I did 450 some stitches, which is a pretty good number. <laughs> I'm pleased with that. I knocked off two tasks on the Magical Stitches homework and several stops on the Stitchopoly board. <laughs> Pass go, so I've passed go four times so far. Not bad for May the, what is today? Six, I think? Yeah, today's May 6th. Or it was, now it's May 7th, it's after midnight. <laughs> yeah, so this is stitched on really pretty fabric. Let's see, sparkle, where's the sparkle? You can kind of see it if I move the phone. It's really sparkly in person. It's well, Blue Diamonds Belfast by Silk Weaver. And there's nothing pink about the fabric. It's like the, maybe if I put the white up here, it'll help. I mean, it's definitely blue. Anyway, it's just like the colors of the floss seem to confuse the iPhone camera and make it seem like the fabric's blue, uh, pink, but it's not, it's all blue blue and white. Anyway, yeah, so I've been working on the wing and the hair. I started the hair. That's pretty exciting. I really love working on this project and I feel like I've neglected her a lot just because I've been focusing on Rapunzel. I started her last October with my friend as it, my friend Christine as a sal before the Stitch Fest retreat in, uh, Herndon, Virginia. She came for a visit. You know, the retreat's supposed to go on this year as well, but things are so uncertain with the epidemic and everything that pandemic rather. Katrina hasn't opened up registration. I mean, there's a strong possibility that it won't be, you know, safe or well advised to have a retreat then. So I guess she doesn't feel like there's any purpose in Having people sign up if it's not going to happen, we, we'll have to wait and see, I guess, and hopefully, I mean, I hope that things go off, that things are normal by October, not least because I have plans to take a vacation in October <laughs> to the most magical place on earth. <laughs> we shall see. I'll be so disappointed if we don't get to go, though. I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, so tomorrow is kind of an extra day because I'm not going to work on fresh squeezed lemonade anymore. So I might just focus the whole day on my whip, which is Teresa Wensler Celtic Cross. And that is the smallest of my whips, and I might be able to finish it tomorrow, so we'll see. Good night. Peace out. It is May 7th. How is everyone doing? We're at the end of our first week of mania. I'm probably going to do like one more day of this vlog and then upload it. So today I had planned to continue working on lemonade, but since I set that aside, it's almost done. The only thing I'm going to work on this evening is <clears throat> Celtic Cross by Teresa Wensler. I am going to see if I can finish it. <laughs> I might be a little ambitious, we'll see. 
All right, I will check in later and show you how far I get. Bye for now. Hello, okay, friends. So here's my update on the Teresa Wensler Celtic Cross. I've been working on it for, I don't know, maybe four hours since the evening, and I got 820 some stitches. A lot of that was detail work, satin stitch, couching, tacking, straight stitch, back stitch, etc. So all that was counted for half. 800 and some is the equivalent. So what I did is I, first I started with the, the green, the 520. I did all that around the border and then I did the blended colors, which was this lighter green here is blended and this, not the lightest color, but the one like right above it, that's a blended color. So all that's blended. There's the satin stitch and the knot pattern on top of the cross is couched. So it's Krynik 002, number four braid couched with DMC. And then on the sides, it calls for 002C, which is the cord. And I actually have that in my stash left over from TW Castle. So I use that and the pattern says to um, tack it down at the intersections with the DMC 729. So I did that. I think it's a really nice, uh, you know, I think the metallics look really good because the, the number four braid is a little bit thicker and the, the cord is thinner. It's sort of befitting for the background, I think. I am planning to continue on this tomorrow because I want to finish. <laughs> well, it's the ninth, but let's pretend it's the eighth. <laughs> so here's my finish on the Teresa Wensler Celtic Cross. I did the equivalent to, it was a lot of detail from stitching. So the, the back stitching, the lazy daisies, focus, focus, why don't you, there we go. The lazy daisies and the beading. Um, and it was, the beads were a pain. I spent all this time trying to get the lazy daisies right and then <laughs> the beads go in and among the lazy daisies, kind of compressing them, so I really needn't have bothered. <laughs> it was two colors of beads. This pattern is the Celtic Cross Freebie by Teresa Wensler. You can find it on the freebie section of her website. It took me about three days, I think, to stitch. It's kind of a lot for a small ornament. There's like 10 instructions for finishing, I think. <laughs> so the metallics, come on, focus. Here we go. So the knot patterns on the arms of the cross are couched. And the that's number four braid, couched with DMC. And then the crisscross pattern with the gold metallic cord, which is hard to see. It's like a diamond pattern is just straight stitch, but then it's couched or tacked down at the intersections of each X with the uh, DMC 729. And I'm pleased with how it came out. I have an idea for how to finish it. And I'm just glad to be done with it. <laughs> All right, I will show you the other thing I worked on yesterday now. So it's the Mill Hill American Eagle ornament. I will insert a picture of the pattern since I don't have it handy. So here's my start. I did not center it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to cut around the edge, so I tried to basically get it as close to the corner as I could, but this is the entire height of the ornament. So it's like an eagle sitting on a flag, and that's the eagle's head, and that's the flag. 
I don't know how many stitches that is, maybe about a hundred or so. I don't know. I should probably count it up so I can add it to my daily stitch count. All right, this is my last update for the Stitch Mania Part 1 vlog. And I move on to Part 2. And I'll make a, more video clips and upload that as a separate vlog at the end of Mania, which for me, will Mania will end on May 15th or thereabout. Maybe May 16th or 17th, I'll upload the video. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for coming on this crazy little ride with me. Happy mania, happy stitching everybody. Take care, be safe, and be well, be kind. Ta-ta!